Now it's time to announce the final two roles to be filled for our play, The Dark Tower, by the Whittier Community Players. First, the role of Barry goes to a newcomer to our group, Dick Nixon, and the lead role of Daphne to that feisty redhead, Pat Ryan. Hey, congratulations, Pat. <laughs> Listen, if you're not doing anything this weekend, uh, well, maybe we could go out. No, thank you. I'm just too busy. Oh, sure, sure. Anyway, congratulations. <laughs> you know, you shouldn't have turned me down for that date. Because one day, I'm going to marry you. <laughs> and that's how I started my pursuit of Thelma Catherine Ryan, whom everyone called Pat, because she was born on St. Patrick's Day. Dick, I was born late in the evening on March 16th. But my Irish father always called me his St. Patrick's babe, so nicknamed Pat. The problem was, I was just not interested in a relationship and settling down. I was a business teacher at Whittier High, where I was leader of the pep committee, and I wanted to see the world. All my life I had lived for others. Now at last I had some freedom of my own. My mother had become ill with cancer when I was 12, and I had to care for her and the household while still attending school. She died when I was 14. Then my father, who had been a minor, became ill with a lung disease, and the whole routine started all over, until when I was 17, he too passed away. I was determined to finish my education, though, and I helped pay for it by working as an extra in the movies and as a cleaning woman in a local bank. I did not have an easy childhood. My childhood also involved many struggles and deaths. My father was a common man, a bit harsh. I got to strap on many occasions. Mm -hmm. And he never made very much money. He was a saint, as was my mother, a magnificent woman. When I was 12, my younger brother, Arthur, died of encephalitis. Then eight years later, my older brother, Harold, passed away after a horrible five-year battle with tuberculosis. And like Pat, I held a lot of odd jobs to help get me through school. When I was 10 years old, I was picking beans in the field. <clears throat> when I was a teenager, I drove this old truck around town delivering vegetables for my father. Graduated from Whittier College, but I was fortunate and got a scholarship to attend law school at Duke University. Graduated in 1937, third in my class, and returned home to Whittier. So you see, Pat and I came from similar backgrounds. And although it took me nearly two and a half years, I finally got her to say yes to marriage, but it wasn't easy. Many nights I'd go over to her place, see the lights on, go up and knock. And I would turn off all the lights and not open the door. On another occasion, I moved. And she didn't tell me her new address. <laughs> but Dick slowly won my heart, writing me letters with thoughts such as this. From the first day I met you, I knew you were destined to be a great lady. You've always had that extra something which takes people out of the mediocre class. And now, dear heart, I want to work with you towards the destiny you are bound to fulfill. You are a great inspiration to me. But dear one, throughout the years, whatever happens, I shall be with you, loving you more every hour, and attempting to let you feel that love in your heart and in your life. In March of 1940, while at a beautiful spot called Dana Point, which overlooked the little sleepy town of San Clemente, I consented to marry that spunky, aspiring young lawyer. Dick sent me my engagement ring, hidden in a basket of flowers delivered to the classroom where I was teaching. We were married at the beautiful Mission Inn in Riverside, California on June 21st, 1940. We took a honeymoon auto tour into Mexico, and because we were so low in finances, we bought all these canned goods to eat for the two weeks. <laughs> but during the wedding ceremony, and reception rather, our friends tore off all the labels. <laughs> we didn't know if we were gonna have pork and beans for breakfast. Or grapefruit slices for dinner. <laughs> the first major crises or turning point occurred five years later in 1945. I had served in the Navy in the South Pacific during World War II, I returned home with nearly $10,000 in government bonds, a combination of our savings, my winnings from playing poker, and my earnings from Nick Snap Shop, which I had set up on Bougainville Island, where the flyers could grab a quick snack and a drink before taking off again. We were living in a small apartment at the Stansbury Manor in Middle River, Maryland, where I worked in Martin 